scientist. Yesterday, I was playing a game where we were trying to name animals for each letter of the alphabet. We wanted to make it harder, so we narrowed our game down to mammals. But then my friend and I started to disagree on if something counted or not, and it made me think, hmm, well, why are some animals mammals and others not? And how am I supposed to know? Well, there's a really great answer to that question. Classification. Let's take a closer look. Classification is simply the process of grouping organisms based on their similar traits and characteristics. I bet if I listed six plants and animals, you'd be able to sort them out as either plants or animals really easily. But how do you know? Well, the biggest difference is that all plants use photosynthesis to turn sunlight into food energy, while animals have to eat to get energy and are unable to do photosynthesis. But if we look closer at our animal kingdom, it's divided up by animals with spines or vertebrates and animals without or invertebrates. And we can sort our vertebrates into even smaller classes. We can make a mammal class, and these are all animals that have hair, give live birth, and most importantly have mammary glands, which allow them to make and feed their milk to their babies. Another class of animals is birds. Any animal that has feathers is automatically a bird, but all birds also have two wings and lay eggs. Our next class is reptiles. All reptiles have either scales, bony plates, or both, and they are all cold-blooded animals that breathe air. Another class of animals is amphibians. These closely resemble reptiles with one big difference. At the start of their life cycle, they live under water and breathe oxygenated water through gills. Then they change as they enter into adulthood and live on land and breathe air through lungs. Our last class in the animal kingdom is fish. This group is enormous and includes a lot of different animals. The one thing they have in common is that they all live under water and have gills to breathe dissolved oxygen in water. Now that you know all of the different classes of vertebrates, I bet it would be really easy to classify any animal. Let's try some. Let's look at an elephant. They have hair, although sparse. They give live birth to super cute baby elephants. And the mother elephants have mammary glands that they use to feed their babies milk. They must be mammals. What about something more obscure? Let's look at a salamander. Kind of weird and slimy looking, but look at that cute smiling face. These guys start out their life cycle in the water with gills, and then as they get older, they develop lungs and breathe air. That means they must be amphibians. See, you're already a pro. So let's take a quick look at how invertebrates are divided up into classes. Invertebrates are all of our animals without a spinal column. These include things like worms, arthropods, or invertebrates with jointed legs like spiders, bugs, and crustaceans, Nidarians or jellyfish, echinoderms with spiny skin like starfish, mollusks like snails and octopus, and sponges. And we could even do the same thing with plants. Remember that all plants are photosynthetic and use sunlight, CO2, and water to make food. The way plants are divided up into groups is really simple. There are vascular plants, which means the plants have vessels similar to your blood vessels that move food and water in the plant, and there are non-vascular plants that don't. If you take a closer look at the vascular plants and divide them into classes, we have either seed-bearing plants that reproduce by making seeds, and those that are non-seed-bearing that reproduce with spores. So classification is just an easy way to group similar organisms based on their traits. Let's take a look at a question. 